Hi, my name is Rebecca and welcome to Wednesday Winos, where we celebrate all things delicious, nice beers, wines from the Yarra Valley. We're currently simulcasting at the moment between Kangaroo Ridge Retreat and also What's River Brewing. And I'm here with Hannah from What's River Brewing and also Scott from Maletto's Brew House to talk to us about IPAs, IPAs from the from the Yarra Valley. So um, as we wait for people to actually join us here on the simulcast or on, on Facebook, just let us know in the comments below to say what we are up to, say hello, what you're drinking tonight. And yeah, so if you don't know me, my name is Rebecca and I come from Kangaroo Ridge Retreat. And we, are, we have a big wine list that where we're trying to get through for winter, but no, because of the current circumstances, we don't get to. So we're going to celebrate online. It's hump day. And I'm also here with Hannah. Take away, Hannah. Hi, I'm one of the co-founders of Watts River Brewing here in Hillsville. And I also love beer. Actually, I like drinking everything. So Wednesday Winos is a great opportunity to have a drink on Wednesday. <laughs> and we're really pleased to have Scott from Maletto's Brew House join us. Welcome, Scott. Scott, can you hear hello. us? Hello. <laughs> I can't hear Hannah. Hi, you can't hear me. I can't, can't hear, hear me. All right. Oh, okay. All right. I'll have to dub it through. So take me off screen and That's I'll right. refresh myself. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. Take away, hot Scott. Tell us a little bit about what's going on. Um, where are we up to? I don't know. What's just going on? Um, yes. hello. Hi. <laughs> Hello, world. Um, I'm not sure if I'm yelling or not, so I probably shouldn't yell. Um, I'm Scott. Uh, the head. Oh, hello, Hannah. Hi. Yes, I can hear you. See, uh, everything's cool. Um, yeah, hi, I'm Scott. Yeah, don't go that cool. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm the brewer at uh, Maletto's uh, Brew House. Uh, we've been going since about December in 2019 uh, and then uh, previously before that it was the Napoleon Brew House. Um, we've been making IPA, XBA, a, a simple lager that sells really well, the draft, uh, that's the IPA in front of us and a few other beers that I've, I've experimented with, um, small batch Hefeweizens and uh, ginger beer which apparently a few people liked. And but we're here tonight about the IPA. Um, yeah, so what are we talking about? We're talking about the beer. So, yeah, I've got the two IPAs here and um, an A. Oops, that's an A and a B. And my trusty assistant has actually put them in there secretly, and I'm supposed to be able to tell the difference between the Watts River IPA, which I'm supposed to be really familiar with. And also the IPA from Maletto's. Um, but before we get going, um, before we go taste testing, sorry to hold off one more second. I just wanted to be, do a really big shout out to Scott, who was here last week. And also the two weeks before that was Emma. Emma from Madden's Rise, who was part of the very first episodes of Wednesday Winos. And thank you both, Scott from SOMA, for being so brave to come online with us today. It was a bit hodgepodge because of the internet but awesome so anyway now after this we have the drinks from we trial from scott we'll go into hannah for the ipa from what's river and then we'll take some questions and answers from everyone in the comments section so take it away scott tell us about your ipa um simple i'm trying to i'm trying to go old school west coast so big hoppy profile Reasonable bitterness, probably in the 50-odd IBU sort of range, uh, but big, heavy sort of West Coast hops, uh, Centennial, uh, Mosaic, Simcoe, big American hops. Um, what we're looking at there as far as numbers go, if anyone out there is geeky, um, starting gravity in Play-Doh, which is what I work in because I come from winemaking background, and Play-Doh is a whole lot easier to understand than specific gravity. 14.6 um, Play-Doh start finish gravity of 2.8. So not bone dry, 
or anywhere approaching that, but in the same kind of numbers as Waddy's IPA, uh, I think their IPA finishes at mid twos. So not quite as dry, but close. Um, and we're talking five grams a litre kettle hops um, with a simple malt bill of just ale malt and a bit of Munich and a bit of wheat. Uh, and then dry hopping at um, eight grams a litre over two occasions. So double dry hopped uh, with Simcoe, um, Amarillo, Cascade and Centennial. Mm. So just big in your face, six and a bit alcohol, 6.3. Um, not silly bitterness, but obvious hops. Thoughts, comments, criticisms? Bueller, anyone? It's nice. Well done, Scott. I'm still trying to work it out. <laughs> I, I can tell you which one is A and which one is B just by looking at it. Yeah. No, I don't oh, want to add. I have to work it out myself. <laughs> yeah, the, mine's a fraction darker than the Waddies. And is yours filtered, Scott? Unfiltered. Um, unfiltered, unpasteurised. No, don't filter it at all. Now you've got it pretty clear then. Yeah, nice and bright. It gets fined in tank using a, a, a seaweed-based fining agent, so it's all vegan-friendly oh. um, for the vegans out there, um, And but it's not filtered, so it just takes time. So it spends an extra... So instead, most most breweries will spend from go to woe on a beer, on an ale two and a half to three weeks. Mine takes three and a half to four weeks just with that settling time in tank. So I avoid the filtering. It's awesome. So um, I'm not a brewer. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm, a, I'm, I'm a winemaker. Yeah, but, you, but you've made a delicious beer and um, – I'm trying to read my recipe so that I can try and uh, match you on uh, stats, but I think I'm not going to. <laughs> but we have quite a, a couple of the um, similar uh, hops in there. So you said you had Amarillo and Simcoe? Yes. Yeah. So um, should I tell you about IP, uh, the Watts IPA and then we can sort yeah, of compare where they differ? Yes, please. <laughs> I'm assuming I've just started with A and I'm going to go for B. So I'm going to try and assume that A is Mulettos and I'm going to go to B. So what, Go I'm ahead. I'm not sure if you're helping by not knowing. <laughs> <laughs> Does Simon even know which one he put in the glass? He wrote it on a, um, a post-it note. Um, so I mean. It's time I'm for the reveal. Cheat. I'm trying not to cheat. <laughs> cheat. So. Hey. <laughs> Alex, what am I supposed to be tasting, Hannah? <laughs> okay, so what's we were brewing? Um, big hop, subtle malt. So um, we've all we've gone for a really, really dry uh, profile, and we like to drink dry beers. So most of the Watts River Brewing beers are super dry. Um, and I always tell people when I'm doing tastings at the cellar door that it can't be entered into the IPA section of the beer awards because it is too dry. It doesn't meet the stats. So our IPA doesn't do so well on uh, the IPA beer awards metal type stuff uh, because we've kind of brewed it how we want to drink it. So, yeah, focus on fresh, fruity, citrusy hops. Um, so in the dry hops, we've got Cascade, Simcoe, Amarillo and Galaxy. Um, and we've got three different varieties in the kettle. Um, we do filter our beers and ours is really, really quite a light colour, um, very, very bright um, and big, yeah, fruity on the nose. <laughs> Becky's putting it off. We also print the geeky stats on the bottle every batch we do so ours is which is one of the things i love <laughs> it's 52 IB, ibu and 1.7 play-doh so i think you said 2.6 play-doh scott 2.8 mine finished that yes yeah so ours is quite oh, bone dry um and 6.6 percent. .6%, so just slightly more alcohol than yours at 6.3 but i 
salute you for going 6.3. I think in Australia with our excise laws, it's really expensive to put out um, a highly alcoholic yeah. beer. So um, you take quite a hit on excise cost per per carton when you go this high. And I also say because it's quite dry, ours carries the alcohol dangerously well. So you do have to be careful when you're drinking it that it's easy to forget that it's 6.6. .6. And I think yours is doing the same, Scott. It's um, it's yeah, it's carrying that 6.3 really well. I have to say, from the from friends that have had the IPA and not realised how strong it was, it's been quite a shock when they've had to stand up after the fourth beer or so. <laughs> Anyone anyway, seen me at Waddy's on a Friday night after <laughs> a week at work? No, if I have more than four pints of IPA, it's it's not a look good look. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we would recommend you read the the label on our beer and um, make sure you don't accidentally have more than than you should. Yeah. I have a question about the no. IBC, like uh, the bitterness. Sorry, or uh, the bitterness. What's water? So we can compare it to water. Like well, one. You have to phone us in. Zero. Yeah. Zero. I believe so. Or is it one? What's water on Plato? Is it one? Plato. Yeah. It's zero. You're right, Scott. Sorry, I shouldn't have doubted you. And and bitterness <laughs> is zero as well. On water, that yeah. would uh, make sense. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's the reference point. Would when would EBC, which is our color, um, zero. Figure, would that be zero on water also? Zero is water as well. <laughs> so we're eleven EBC. I don't know if you've got that on your. I don't have EBC on mine. I, I'd have to look at the recipe sheet to tell you what my calculations were and whether <laughs> the brew house provided that at the same time. But I think I think mine's about I think mine's about fourteen or fifteen EBC. So yeah. And do you adjust your water to um, with minerals, Scott? Like I'm yeah. seeing, I'm reading the brewer's recipe sheet, and the brewer said to me when I asked him, "What should I say?" about it um they said you can offer anyone the the recipe sheet so we're not um afraid to share that if anyone wants no to I'm, know. Never, I'm never afraid to share that either <laughs> um, but there's a whole bunch of comparison to other brewing waters like london and pilsen and dublin yeah so that the guys can um and then what the hillsville water is and then what what they do to adjust that water so I think that's really interesting. Yeah. So what I try and do is move it in, move it into an appropriate pH range, and sort of salt range for the style of beer. So if it's an IPA, I want it, I want it showing a little bit of those chloridey, sulfidey sort of characters, but not silly uh, hard water. I just want it moderate so that it shows the hop profile without trying to hide or make the the malt astringent. So. So if I was to um. If I was to try and make this, make your beer, I would just use a tap from Melbourne water into there as opposed to <laughs> the tank water that I collect for the hills. No, I'd, 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 use, I'd use your tank water rather than the Melbourne water because the Melbourne water is going to have chlorine in it. Okay. Um, if we filter, to, yeah, we filter yeah. all our water yeah. um, for beer making. Water and then you can adjust it. Mm. So calcium chloride is not the same as adding chlorine. Okay. So if you if you've got to filter your water, start at neutral water, and then adjust your salts, and then a reach of pH that you find is appropriate for whatever style of beer you're trying to create. Okay. Yeah, but filter your water to start with, and then adjust it, rather than give what Melbourne Water wants to give you. <laughs> probably probably full of fluorine, fluoride and chloride, which is going to give you a well in wine making terms, it's going to be a give you a cork tainted beer. Mm. I've not, got a question. Not every time, but if the precursors are there, it's going to happen eventually. All right. Have you got a question, Hannah? I've got a question from the Watts page. Um, Murray asks, do you have a drop recommended for isolation drinking? Uh, that would be uh, Mazar, my mate. Uh, and, yes, that would be anything you want to drink that I make. <laughs> or <laughs> if you were wanting or to branch out to Watts River. Yeah. We have made the Isolation XPA, but that is selling strongly. So I was told that we're going to run out of that pretty yeah. soon. 
kind of why I didn't have any here to, tonight to give everyone because they're like, yeah, we don't really have much left. I'm like, strong beer. Well done. <laughs> um, so, Scott, out of all the beers that you brew, which one's your favourite? It's probably the one I haven't made yet. Which is? I really, really want to do a Belgian triple in conjunction with the What's River guys. Oh. <laughs> and then I'll oh. want to age it in some old Chardonnay barrels. Mm, how long for? Oh, uh, I don't know. How long has Ben just walked through the room for? <laughs> <laughs> He's just getting the hills, uh, the What's River branding in as he walks through. <laughs> oh, cool. Uh, no, nah, six to 12 months I'd like to see that aged. Okay. Uh, so some sort, of, some sort of triple in conjunction and some sort of collab. Um, but I, I, love, I love what he's Belgians. Um, I've only made a handful of Belgians in my time and they've all been small scale. So it's, um, I've never home brewed. My home brewing is commercial brewing on a 300 litre scale at work. And it's like, yeah, I really want to do it properly with you guys and make a proper Belgian and barrel age it and do it in a couple of thousand litres and, nice. and make some beer we can flog. <laughs> well, we do love our Belgians and uh, I was very upset that um, they brewed a Belgian spice triple while I was pregnant, so I wasn't able to indulge more than a sip. <laughs> I reckon ah. I, um, I think I've got it. Okay. I, think, I think the A is um, Miletus, Miletto's IPA. Yes. And I think the B is... What's River IPA? Um, I think I think Hannah's got it the other way around in her hands. Yeah, so the one with the in your right hand right with hand. the logo is with ours. The other way around, okay. Yeah, so you can just tell it's slightly clearer because of the filtration, I think, and um, I can definitely taste the different um, Plato. Oh. oh, the dryness, okay. Yeah. Put the hydrometer in it and see how it looks. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to see if I can find that little. Uh, the little. Uh, I'm going to have to find out. If, unless Simon, Simon can tell me online. He's he's watching on the comments. If you let me know if I was correct or not, because that's my call for that. Um. So, uh, do you? Um, can I can I just do a big bit of a call out to some friends who tuning in? Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, Jody and Muzz, Murray, who asked the really pertinent question about the isolation drink. Uh, Bianca and Misha, um, they're my friends and I love them and thank you for supporting everything that we do that we do. Love you guys. Thank you. Awesome. Did, Stay hey, drink local. <laughs> I think I, I, <laughs> hey, Mileto, so I got the answer. It's coming up on the screen right now. I think I was correct. A was B was whatever. I really struggled, actually. I really struggled. Um, there was a difference. The difference that I could taste in this one was a bit more of a citrus. I don't know if I could citrusy flavour. Is that ours or? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That'll be that kiwi hop you couldn't pronounce before. Anna. <laughs> uh, no, that was a kettle hop, the one I couldn't pronounce. So in the kettle for us is... Muter, muter. <laughs> uh, let me find it again. Um, it's spelled M O U T E R E, muter, um, cascade and tetra in our well, in our well, uh, sorry, our well, kettle. <laughs> now, I have a question for you, Hannah. Yes. Seeing as you're looking at your husband, um, how do you achieve such low finishing gravity? How do we achieve such – I'm going to have to phone a friend. I think it's really healthy yeast is what I understand, but let me just double-check that that's correct. How do we achieve low finishing gravity? There's multiple ways. There's, oh, there's multiple ways. We use a really, yeah, a pretty good fermenting yeast. I use a good fermenting yeast. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. It permits out dry. It permits out dry. We also mash really low. They mash low? Yeah, cool. 64, 63? 64, 63. 
does that mean anything to you when you say mash low? Oh, yeah, 63. 63 max. max. Okay. And they, uh, they add a bit of sugar in the kettle. Okay, cool. <laughs> So no enzymes. We're not we're not playing with enzymes. We're not playing with enzymes. Playing, playing, playing really with healthy yeast. So we propagate the yeast before we don't dry pitch. Okay. So we've got a dedicated yeast propagator. So <laughs> William's asking you to join the club, Ben. Yeah. <laughs> I was wondering, um, what yeast do you use, um, Scott? In your uh, myself, on on this beer, it's USO five. Mm -hmm. um, I hydrate it the morning of the first brew and inject it later that afternoon once the beer's been transferred to fermenter. Um, so I don't have a starter or anything quite so fancy as the boys at Watts River. Um, I, I, I use a fresh batch at about 80 grams per hectolitre of um, yeast going into each brew. Mm. USO5. <laughs> nice, simple, clean ale yeast. All right, cool. Okay, so um, so thank you so much, Scott and Hannah. That was awesome. It was really, um, really, really great. Um, for the last part of the, one of the last sections of the um, Wednesday Winos is actually to talk about something that you noticed this week uh, that was great because it, we want to end on a high note. So... Uh, Scott, was there a, something that you noticed this week that was pretty amazing? Yes. Oh. Um, I had to take time and ask my better half for some advice on this, but she did come back with the best answer I hope I could give you. I've noticed that the pace of things have slowed down. Everything about the world gives you a chance to smell the roses and take time and not leave your home and carry your bin out in a dress-up uniform <laughs> and, yeah. and try and spend half an hour with your friends online and talk crap about your beer and, and be nice to each other. And also, like tonight, we were going to do takeaway. No. So I cooked edamame and gyoza and spring rolls and we had a Japanese restaurant that I cooked. We didn't go out and buy it. We just made it at home. That's um, It's a shame you can't have us over, though, because that sounds yeah. amazing. It would have been uh, great. Next, next week when we're home again, I'll, um, I'll invite you guys around and when quarantine's off and we can do it. So. Oh, be careful. We will show up. Everything's a little slower and everything's a little bit more... Some things are more caring, some, some things aren't, but... Everything seems to be for the people you care about. Just everyone's smiling a bit more. So anyway, that's it. It's beautiful. I like it. Uh, yeah. Hannah, what about you? Well, mine is fajoas. We have a an amazing fajoa tree. I don't even know if that's how you say it. I'm struggling with pronunciation tonight. Um, we don't eat the fajoas. I've t tried tried to feed them to my child didn't succeed anyway but i put a post on facebook and have given away a bunch of fajoas who seem genuinely excited to have them so that's been nice mm, nice nice um i rebecca how about you my what i've noticed is that okay so i've i've noticed people being a lot more patient with each other and i don't know whether that's just because um we're forced to or what, but and we're it, one and a half meters apart. Yeah. Yeah, one and a half meters apart. And so there's this I went on Monday I went and did some um, shopping to for grocery shopping and there's a sort of like an aisle dance as you kind of try and dodge each other and maintain the one meter five, one point five meters. But yeah, everyone does it in a kind of in a really good like in a lighthearted way and I was like it's a lot more kinder than before when people were like get out of my way and um, I just want that yeah but yeah it was sort of those small signs that people are looking out for each other that I thought okay that's that's something nice so that was something I noticed this week so yeah cool yeah all right so one more, one more shout out to some friends <laughs> Uh, Kay and Barry from Crumbs in Hillsville, they've tuned in apparently and hopefully 
they're watching and listening and taking everything on board and going to buy some really good beer, Barry? Definitely. Should and, I ask a question? Right. <laughs> uh, and, and Kristen from uh, a friend of mine from the city uh, in St Kilda. Hi, Kristen. <laughs> Excellent. All right. So I was just wondering whether you wanted to know also what's happening next week because I was pretty excited about this. Um, What's happening next week? Um, I have to actually move the hide something. Kind of our, uh, really, it's really it's suspense. Thing. She's building suspense. Suspense? Okay. Oh, doo -doo. Okay. Okay. Come on. Show. Show. It's not working. Anyway, so. <laughs> doesn't matter. We work with it. Um, so next week we have uh, Pimpernel Vineyards coming up. We've got the winemaker and also, uh, sorry, winemaker Damien coming online and also Morgan to talk about the GSM, which is pretty exciting because it's, yeah, it's a delicious wine, I think. What, have Can you, you spell GSM, please? <laughs> so the GSM too is coming online next week um and the makers are going to talk about it and it's a delicious wine that a medium body one but also if you're interested in actually getting some gsm for next week you kind of have to organize it a little, a little bit tricky because you have to go online to order some or you can give them a call to organize a pickup their cellar door is not actually open but they'll open for pickup so you've got to be a little bit proactive and organise it yourself and say, yeah, I would like to pick up a bottle of GSM from Pimpernel Vineyards. Cool. Yeah. So I'll try and bring it up again. Um, Let Damien know he needs to prepare because I'm going to ask early. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's not coming up. Make it audio only or remove the like, – it's not coming up. It doesn't Sorry. matter. We can it's post not... it when we um, yeah. post the live video. And also just a reminder that we can get the Mulettos Brew House IPA and the Watts River IPA both on the um, on the respective brewery websites. Yes. 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 If you're in Hillsville, you can pop in, pop in the number seven in Hillsville, just around the corner from Waddies and buy takeaway beer. Or if you're... Coldstream side, you can prop, pop into the Provador at Melito's and buy takeaway beer. <laughs> Both seven Excellent. days a week. Yeah, definitely. So, last one. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks, Scott. Thanks, Thank you. Both mine are empty because I love them equally. <laughs> <laughs> nice work. <laughs> nice work. Thank you. All right. Bye, Bye everyone.